I was talking to the Street Profits and Matt was sitting right there and me and Matt uh, talked a little bit. I love Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle kind of reminds me of a male stripper. <laughs>Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sports Kita's The Wrestling Time Machine. You can find us at WrestleBinge on YouTube and anywhere you find your favorite podcast. My name is Mac Davis, along with me, my two co-hosts, and these are big-time names in the world of professional wrestling. First, we have legendary pro wrestling journalist, Bill After. Hey, Bill. Well, thank you very much for that, uh, for putting me on that level. I really appreciate that. Very flattered. Well, they got paid a lot of money to say that, so don't worry about it. Uh, oh, and next that. to him, <laughs> next to him, of course, is a legit WWE Hall of Famer, and we call him Mr. Holla Holla Teddy Long. I'm Holla Holla Holland for you too, players. <laughs> he's kind of like my- he's kind of like the draft king. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, let's talk about that draft. Uh, you know, the last time we saw you, you had to sneak off uh, to go do some work, and you went into Friday Night SmackDown. Tell us about the experience uh, during uh, the draft. Well, no experience. You know, I mean, I just go to work. That's what I do. Okay, so they, you know, and I uh, had a chance. It was the first time I did that, though, was part of the draft, and uh, that was really exciting. You know, I never did that before, so... Everything was good. The morale, everybody was, you know, seemed to be happy and having a great time. You know what I mean? And that's, you know, the kind of way I like to go in, you know, with everybody happy and nobody's angry. And, you know, and all the young kids there, you know, we had a ch- I had a chance to talk to a few of them, give them a little bit of advice and talk to them about things they should do and things they should not do. And uh, it was just a fun time there. And also, you know, me being able to be with my man, JBL, you know, me and him got a lot of history. So I had a great time. Did anybody... Did, did anybody um, talk to Rob Van Dam? And I, I did about him holding the uh, card upside down. The card down. upside down. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, well, you know what? I didn't, I didn't even know it. Know he done that at Corpus. And uh, so the next day, uh, well, Monday, me and uh, Road Dog, you know, we were sitting in the hotel lobby, we was waiting on the on the uh, car service, and Road Dog started telling me about it. I was getting blasted on social media about having his car turn upside down. Yep. And, uh, of course, uh, we can understand. <laughs> 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 so I thought it was just absolutely great. So we told Rob about it when he got there. In fact, he he rode with me and Road Dog to the arena. And so I think he picked at it when he came out on Raw. He had to sign upside down. Then he picked yeah. it up. Turned it over. <laughs> that was great. It was so Amen. good. Hey, man, things happen, you know, this, that's yeah. all I can tell you. Now, let me ask you, Teddy, when you came out on stage with uh, JBL on uh, the draft night with Raw, it looked like you about got tackled by JBL. What the hell was going on? No, what we were doing, uh, when, when I came out first, you know, and then he come out, when I walked over to him, I was messing with him, I said, where's my money? That's what I was saying to him. Where's my money? And then all of a sudden, you know, we just went into the, you know, the hook and the hand. Hey, you smacked you with his hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was telling him, pay me. He owes me. <laughs> the surprise to me was when, because I didn't think of this, was that when Molly Holly was there. She oh, was, yeah. I, I never thought of them bringing her in. She looked wonderful. Yeah. She always chance, does. Yeah, I had a chance to talk to her, too. What a sweetheart, man. Just yeah. one of the nicest women you could ever meet, man. So... Great, good to see Molly all the time. Molly yes. was always, uh, like you say, she always came across as the angel uh, on the uh, the roster. You know, the the one that couldn't do any harm and couldn't do any bad to anybody because she just had a sweet heart. You could tell that yeah. that was legitimate who she was. You know. Yeah, but I, I, you know what? When you see people like that, boy, you better never, better make sure you don't ever make a man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's a very classy lady. She yes. really is. Yeah. All right, let's talk about uh, round one on the first night. Uh, this was on SmackDown. I uh, am the SmackDown, uh, whoa, 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 where is it here? For SmackDown, the first pick was the undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns, Solo Sokoa, and Paul Heyman, the bloodline. But it didn't come with the Usos. Uh, what were your thoughts when that happened? I mean, are, did, were you expecting a, a split between that group? No, uh, well, they don't tell. I mean, nobody even knows where they're going to be drafted to anyway. So yeah. it wasn't nothing for me to expect. You know, I thought it was, you know, kind of surprising. But, uh, you know, who knows what the plans are? Who knows, you know, what, what what's next? But uh, I think whatever they did, the draft, whoever they 
took or changed over or moved to another brand, you know, I think they did it for a reason. Keep in mind, keep in mind that the wrestlers who are being drafted, and I know this for a fact, don't know about it until it's until it's announced. That's right. So they have to change their entire life because, you know, tell you my wife, I'm going Monday night to Raw. Now, all of a sudden, I'm away on Friday night instead of Monday night. It's totally different. Yeah, you well, I'm, go- I'm, go- I'm glad you brought that up, Bill, because, uh, Teddy, that was a question I was going to have. When that happens, when you have a couple... Uh, married couple, especially, and they're both in the business, and they're let's say they're both on Raw, but one gets drafted to SmackDown, one gets drafted to Raw. Does that work very often? Because it seems like a lot of times we see relationships end when that happens. Well, relationships end if there's some problems. If there are no problems, then you don't have to worry about your relationship because the two of you understand what your job is and what you have to do. So that comes with the territory. So if you got a strong marriage or a strong relationship, then you're not going to have no problems at all because you already understand this is my job. This is our job. This is what we have to do. So right. if, you, if, if, if the draft or a change of pace causes you to have problems in your relationship, then you was having problems all along. Yeah, you're Does in the wrong the- business then. Yes. Does the WWE take an account that they're married and try to keep them together? What do you think this is? A dirt daycare? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> I had to ask. I had to ask. <laughs> Some of them might want to be away from there. Yeah, these are grown hands. people. We're grown adults we're talking about, man. We ain't WWE. We don't care about that. We, we, we it's business. We to do a job. We, we care about you doing your job. That's right. Now, you your figure family out life and your personal life is your business, so you take care of that. I found it interesting, Mac, you asked about Heyman and Solo uh, and Roman Reigns being drafted. (coughs) Allergies are terrible. Being drafted to SmackDown. The Usos, not. And whatever they have in mind, this is going to keep that story so intriguing because now Roman can't go after the world championship because that's going to be a that's going to be a raw brand situation unless they change that and the usos though can still go after the tag team belts because Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are on the raw brand as well well yeah, th- go ahead. and i think to really to to really do that you know this is why i think the general manager is so important yeah. because there's a guy right there that is now split up Okay, so why wouldn't he go to the general manager and I talk to him and let's see, can we work something out where you can get me over there with my team or maybe come try to bribe the general manager? You know what I mean? That's a story right there. Yeah, everybody's got a price. I, and we, I've talked about this before, and both of you know this. I, I miss the the authority figure type of uh, GM. That look, it's like a circus to me. You have a ringmaster for a circus, and he's there for a reason to draw your attention to where the action's happening, tell you the story as the night goes on. You're basically the narrator. So that's something that I still believe needs to be in wrestling as much as I believe we need the days of the old managers to come back. I love a manager ringside. It opens up to so many possibilities and stories and and just wicked, evil ways of winning matches that we don't see anymore. Right. Well, the other thing, too, you know, the business has changed. So, you know, we have to change with the times. But, I mean, I don't see how you can ever get away from what brought you to the day. My big surprise, where did Teddy go? He'll be back. Yeah, there right. he is. <laughs> my my right. big surprise of the whole draft, and I was really surprised at that, is neither brand picked Braun Breaker from NXT. Yeah. What? What's with that? I I'm thinking Teddy. You may, maybe I'm wrong, but you've got uh, Gunther in there right now. That is a legitimate threat to somebody like Brock Lesnar and some of the bigger guys. And maybe Braun Breaker needs to be held back a little bit longer. Let's see where those storylines go first before you bring in another guy who's going to be thrown in that mix. Because maybe it's just a little bit too early storyline wise. Good point. Yeah, well, well, like I said, we 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 we're just uh, reporters. We have no yeah. idea <laughs> what's going on. And but I like prefer I said, it that way. When it's time for them to do something with brother, then they, they'll do it with him. Of course, uh, now we, we can I go through this real quick here, but uh, the pick for Raw that night uh, on SmackDown was Cody Rhodes. I don't think that was a big surprise where we'd find Cody going. 
Well, no. uh, he, he, well, he's been there before, so you know, Cody just went back home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, SmackDown's uh, Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair was uh, chosen for SmackDown, and Raw. Now, wait took... a minute, that is, isn't she the she's the Raw Champion? Yeah, Raw Women's she's Champion. Now, right, so she's now on SmackDown. So what happens with that? That's a story. Yeah, yeah. we wanted to find that out. <laughs> Are they going to strip her of that that's, title? That's, like why, the that's why you need the general manager, you know, to straighten things out. There you go. Bring Teddy Long back. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Let's see. Becky Lynch was uh, Raw's choice. Um, in round two, we had SmackDown, and SmackDown got a great one here. Uh, Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins, uh, the Street Profits. Oh, yeah. They, they're one of my favorite tag teams right now. They're so entertaining. And uh, I'm trying, which one? Uh, Montez Ford. Uh, he's the ex-Marine, or he's he, he was a Marine. He is a Marine. Let me I gotta make that clear for those Marines out there. He is a Marine, and just incredible talent. I have loved watching him since WrestleMania last year. Mm -hmm. His talent has been on display, and I hope they do something with him because there's big things down in his future. You can see it. Well, I, I think they are. I think they are because uh, you know these guys are, are got great attitudes, man. They no 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 problem people, you know what I mean? And I had a chance to talk to them too, man. And so they're hungry, they want this, and they're willing to do whatever it is, to, you know, to make it happen. I thought they were going to split them up because a lot of fans have said that uh, they think Montez Ford uh, will be, as, as a single wrestler, would be a major superstar. Well, I agree, but if you do that now, you lose the story of the breakup of the two of them. And I would, I would play that out until you split that team. Well, you know, let them let them get a little bit more success. You know what I mean? Let them climb that ladder just a little bit more, and then you know, on down the line somewhere there, we might have to start a little bit of jealousy. Yeah, that, that, that <laughs> splash know, so. he does. That splash he does. I've rarely seen anyone go that high up off that corner. Oh pole. yeah. Oh yeah. He, he get the, the leaping and the the spring is just incredible. I mean, just incredible. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Intercontinental, Intercontinental Champion Gunther, uh, or Imperium as a whole, went to Raw. SmackDown got Edge, so it looks like we'll have Edge around for a little bit longer, which is nice to hear because uh, I think he's been doing some fantastic work, especially considering you know how far along he is in his career right now. And it's, it is always good to have people like Edge around too, like you know, right. to help the young guys. You know, yep. the young, can, the not so much guys, guys and girls that are in the business now. You know, Edge has a lot of knowledge. That, that's why I admire Shawn Michaels so much, man, because I had a chance to see him for the last couple of days, and I watched him, and that's what he did. Went round, he was down at ringside, you know, working with all the young talent, you know, trying to help them, you know, accomplish whatever they needed to do, and you know, just to take the time and to be, a, you know, be with them because they want it, man. I had yeah. so many people come up to me talking to me about stuff, and I didn't mind sharing my advice with them because they wanted to listen. And so that's why I said, Shawn Michaels, you know, absolutely fantastic, man. Yes. Take yeah. the time and, you know, and deal with those kids. And it's, it's, it's a lot of a lot of other guys need to follow in Shawn's footsteps. I'm telling you, leave it alone. You know what I mean? You ain't got to keep yeah. trying to be the star all your life. You don't, they know you now. You've had a great run. So go and try to help somebody else be successful. Help these young kids, you know, learn this business. And I thought Sean did a great job uh, as, you know, a presenter uh, or a, a name caller or whatever you want to call it for the draft, uh, especially considering they kept hitting him for his NXT people. He just like throwing the card in the air, getting frustrated. That's great. I mean, people still love Sean, and that was classic DX type of Sean, and yeah. it was perfect for what it was. And like you say, being able to share with those uh, younger kids and show them the right way. Man, yes. if, if Sean Michaels is running his mouth about how to wrestle and you're not listening – you shouldn't be working. Well, I, no, no, you should be just kicked out. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't I did notice. No time with you. I did notice, though, with some of the NXT talent, a lot of them are. If you don't watch NXT regularly, calling them up to SmackDown and Raw is going to be like, who are these people, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and like you say, some of the names they called from NXT were not names I think most people were expecting. Uh, there were yeah. other names that people were waiting to hear. Uh, but again, I think it's probably all storyline that those storylines haven't played completely out for them to come in yet. Yeah. So uh, Matt Riddle went to Raw. Uh, so I, Matt Riddle seems to be back in the fold again. And uh, Teddy, did you have a chance to see Matt in the back? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I talked to Matt. For, I mean, Matt said that I was talking to the street prophets, and Matt was sitting right there, and me and Matt uh, talked a little bit. I love Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle kind of reminds me of a male stripper. <laughs> I, I, I have brought that up to Raju over at uh, at Sports Kita headquarters, and I said he looks like a male stripper. That's exactly. And that's great. What I said. That's great too because I watched him, you know, come down, and boy, those women, those eyes were glued in on him too. And you know, he, he, he's he's like half naked as he's going down. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> he reminds a lot of but people because he has a great body. He is. A, he looks great, man, and he he looks the part. He reminds a lot of people of Kevin Von Erich with the barefoot look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except he wears more of a banana hammock than anybody else I've seen. That's that's yeah. what well, that's why the ladies love him. So he, he's he's a modern day warrior. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and he is very entertaining as long as he can keep himself out of trouble. Uh, I think he'll do really well. He was doing great with Randy Orton, which I would love to see Randy come back, but I'm not sure that'll happen. Uh, well, it sometimes it takes a while with the young guys, man. You know they have yeah. to go through some things, you know, and so Grow hopefully, up. I, but I, but I believe in Matt. I think he's going to be all right. He, well, he lost the scooter, by the way, didn't he? I haven't seen the scooter recently. <laughs> yeah, he has lost the scooter. He wasn't, uh, I don't think I saw any pigeons lately either, have I? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, maybe he got a ticket with the scooter and they won't, he doesn't have a license anymore. So, so Teddy, uh, how much of uh, Matt Riddle is, uh, is real personality that we see on TV? 100 percent yeah what you see but what, what i saw back there is the same thing you guys seen on tv he's just that guy so i can see where he could rub some of the older guys wrong then huh yeah well i mean it is what it is yeah if the guy's I know him got and... it if the guy's got it he's got it that's just yeah, just that simple you got it so, for what it. the older guys need to realize they be, they need to try to get on the same card with matt that's what i'd be doing oh yeah i'd be, I'd be right running behind matt yeah you still make money <laughs> Kevin right, Owens. Kevin Owens does not like him as character. Character. Oh, as, yeah, yeah. Yes, that, that's going over very well. That's a heck of a situation with Kevin and Sammy, and Kevin doesn't well, want. And the other thing I think too, you know, with Matt, they, not, now we just got to find the right guy for Matt to work with. That's what I think is the hole up on him right now. They just haven't found the perfect guy for him. And then you know, to Matt, I think. Well, to me, you know. The, Elias, you know, kind of does it for me, him and Matt. You know what I mean? I don't know, I, it, but I just see that, you know? They kind of killed off a lot of Elias, though. I mean, they, they've they kind of, I don't know, uh, they, they brought him up, and then all of a sudden he's losing, you know, in short matches to people. When he first came in, he actually, I, and I know he's not the same kind of character, but there was something about him that told me on the roster, he felt like a macho man kind of feel. He, yes. he was, and, and I've always felt that. And, and then they got away from that. And I was like, oh, he had this natural current macho yep. vibe about him that was really cool. That's what they need to execute, you know, and, and actually get out there and make happen on TV. Because Elias, to me, was fantastic during that period. <laughs> I'd have Elias. I'd have Elias to start messing with him. Maybe go, you know, maybe go to his hotel room and just knock on the door. And when he opens the door, Elias just starts playing the guitar, starts serenading him. Yep. He's yeah. trying to get in the room, but Matt won't let him in. But yeah. <laughs> hey, that would be funny, actually. That'd be really oh, good. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mac, you wanted to see Macho Elias, right? Yeah. I, I mean, well, you know, I don't, want him, I don't want him to be Macho Man, but he, like I say, he already had that cool vibe about him, and it was all his. Here's it is right here, luscious Matt Riddle. Luscious. <laughs> and have to be an M if if uh, you know. It's oh, wait, be wait, a- wait, wait. Mag as Ernie Roth, the Grand Wizard, would have called him magnificent Matthew Riddle. <laughs> yeah, that, that magnificent Matt. <laughs> All right, we'll never get through this list today. I can tell. Uh, let's see. Uh, SmackDown got Bobby Lashley. Raw took Drew McIntyre. SmackDown got AJ Styles. Mitchin, is that how you say that name, Bill? Mitchin? Mitchin? How are you spelling it? M I C H I N. Yes. Mitchin. Mitchin. Okay. Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, the OC. Uh, Raw took the Miz. And in the final round of that night, Bailey, Dakota Kai, and uh, EO Sky, Damage Control, went to SmackDown. Raw took Shims. Shimsky Nakamura. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, thank you. 
Uh, SmackDown. You gotta get those teeth fit in the office. Oh, I, yeah, I know. Who can do it by mail order? Uh, let's see. NXT Women's Tag Team Champion Alba Fire and Isla Dawn uh, went to SmackDown. That was a big, you know, change for uh, that we were just talking about for Shawn Michaels. He, I don't think he cared for that too much. At least as character, he's like he really hated that. Uh, on Raw, NXT Women's Champion Indy Hartwell. Uh, is going to Raw. So that was one that I think a lot of people thought that might actually happen, and it did. So be curious to see where that storyline goes. 